Hi, and welcome back. This is the final update on Cross 18. This brood started off looking very drab, and honestly left me a bit discouraged. But as they matured, they finally began to show some of the color I was hoping for. Therefore, we can now take a closer look at the results. While the cross wasn't perfect, seeing how these phenotypes eventually manifested helps us test our ideas about the genetics behind this line, and more importantly, figure out what to do next. If you're new to the channel, I'm Ivan. This project is a long-term documentation of my journey to stabilize a pure Snow White guppy line, with the ultimate goal of adding unique traits to create a signature strain. But because this is a complex genetic puzzle, it's hard to keep track of every generation just through videos. Therefore, I've built a full pedigree tree on my website at ivansguppies.com where you can trace the lineage of every fish we discuss back to our original founders. Having this tab open during these videos can be helpful. Cross 11 is the closest I've come to a true breeding line. So I chose a male from that group, C11BM, to father this cross. He was paired with C13AF, a female I initially believed was a pure Snow White. But as the fry grew, it became clear she was heterozygous for a European blau, meaning the brood was split between snow whites and fish with red or pink coloring. In part one, I was disappointed by their lack of vibrancy. Therefore, I began investigating a potential genetic link to explain the dullness. However, shortly after that video, the males finally began to bloom into the vibrant colors I've seen in prior crosses which is an encouraging validation of my general theories. But just as the color phenotype took a turn for the better, the overall health of the brood took a turn for the worse. This cross has been plagued by a large percentage of weak fish. To give you some perspective, I keep a strict tally of every male I transfer to the grow out tanks. Out of 41 total males identified, 14 have already died. While a few losses are expected in a large brood, a total of 16 deaths across the whole group is significantly higher than my previous crosses. Because this is the only line I have left with a genetic connection to my original female number two, I can't simply move on. Therefore, I have to be incredibly strict with my selection process to ensure I don't perpetuate this pattern of weakness in future generations. Since this is the final update for Cross 18, we need to look at the survival data and phenotypic distributions. We started with a total of 54, but after the losses I mentioned, we are left with 38, a 30% reduction. Interestingly, the gender trend I've noticed in recent crosses has reappeared here. We started with 41 males and 13 females, and even after the losses, we're sitting at a heavy 71 to 29% male to female ratio. But while I have some preliminary ideas about what's causing this bias, I'm still working on a way to physically test those theories. Therefore, for now, we will simply record this as a reoccurring trend in the data. When it comes to the colors of the surviving 27 males, the split is remarkably clean. 12 are phenotypically snow white, and 15 are various shades of red to pink. Because this is nearly an even 50-50 split, it strongly suggests a monogenic trait, a single genetic switch, which I've been attributing to European Blau. From what I've gathered, it seems my Snow White phenotype requires the fish to be homozygous for the recessive Blau gene. However, even with that clear split, there is still a wide range in the quality of the color. While most eventually bloomed, a small number of these males remain noticeably drab, even months later. The variation in vibrancy within this brood is the perfect time to introduce a key concept in breeding, polygenic traits. Up until now, 
we've mostly discussed monogenic traits, things like magenta, Storzbach, or European Blau, which act like a simple on-off switch controlling a single gene. But reality is often more complex. Many characteristics, like the overall vibrancy or dullness of a fish, are likely polygenic, meaning they are controlled by a whole team of genes working together. Instead of a clear yes or no, polygenic traits manifest as a spectrum or a phenotypic spread. This explains why, even within our snow white group, some males are brilliantly opaque while others look almost transparent. Now, I could be wrong about the specific mechanics here, but the strategy for improvement remains exactly the same. Always select the best possible individuals. If a trait is monogenic, you see a jump in quality in one generation. If it's polygenic, the progress is slower and requires more patience, but you are still compounding those good genes over time. This applies to everything from color intensity to the half moon fin shapes I'm working on. Therefore, careful selection is the only way to shift the population. If you leave a strain to colony breed without selection, they will eventually settle into a bell curve where most fish are just average and only a few are exceptional. My goal is to use strict selection to push that entire curve toward the exceptional side, ensuring the Snow White of the future is as vibrant as possible. Moving from the males to the females, I ran into a bit of a wall. Based on the 50-50 split in their brothers, I know half of these females should be heterozygous for European Blau. But unlike the males, I simply cannot see any red pigments on them to tell them apart. It's frustrating because it means I'm essentially flipping a coin. I have a 50-50 chance of accidentally picking a breeder that carries that hidden red trait, just like I did with the mother of this cross. Therefore, I have to accept a degree of trial and error here. It's not the end of the world, it just means I have to clean up the phenotypes again in the next generation, and we'll work through it as the results come in. Since I couldn't distinguish the female phenotypes, I had to move forward with the best information I had. I've already set up cross 26 using three of these females. Because I was worried about losing that unique half black snow white male from cross 16, I needed to secure his lineage immediately. These cross 18 females were the only ones that didn't already carry the half black trait, making them perfect candidates for a test cross. The goal here is simple. We're testing to see if the half-black trait is linked to the X or the Y chromosome in our male. But because of the Blau uncertainty I just mentioned, we might end up with a messy result. If the females are carriers, we could see a split of up to four different phenotypes, including fish with unwanted red coloring. Therefore, to keep the data as clean as possible, I've already isolated the first female to drop fry and remove the other two from the equation. The experiment is officially underway, and the remaining eight females have been sold at a local auction to make room for this new generation. Turning to the males, I had to make a calculated choice. I've selected C18AM, who I believe is the strongest candidate for the next generation. But he isn't necessarily the perfect Snow White. While some of his brothers had stronger iridescence, they were also heavily pink. Therefore, I chose C18AM because he hits my target snow white color while still carrying that iridescent forehead speck I want to establish in the line. I've paired him with a half black snow white female from cross 16 to create cross 22. Ideally, I would have used a standard snow white female, but the only ones available were his direct sisters. Because I've set a personal challenge to minimize sibling crosses wherever possible, I'm using the C16B female to continue the line. This setup is a crucial step in maintaining the health of the project while refining the look of the fish. Both of these new setups are incredibly special milestones for the project. If you've been following from the very start, you know I began this journey with four random females and a single snow white male named Gandalf. Since then, I've meticulously folded these separate lineages into one another. But until now, those lines have remained somewhat isolated. 
Therefore, Cross 22 and 26 represent a Grand Slam moment. They are the very first pairings that will produce offspring carrying the genetic blood of all four original matriarchs. I've created a color-coded chart on my website that visualizes this convergence, and it's a powerful way to see just how far we've come. I'm excited to see how this full integration impacts the stability and health of the line as we keep moving forward. That is the final verdict on Cross 18. While the results weren't the most impressive in terms of Snow White phenotypes, the lessons were invaluable. But even if the fish weren't perfect, seeing those familiar inheritance patterns confirms that our underlying genetic theory is sound. Therefore, I'm moving forward with confidence. I'm currently clearing out the tanks to make room for the Grand Slam generations, and six of the pinkest males from this brood have already found new homes through a local auction. If you enjoy this deep dive into the systematic breeding of a custom guppy line, go ahead and subscribe. The next video will focus on Cross 21, a pairing that hasn't had its own dedicated spotlight yet, featuring the same male I used to father Cross 18, but with a different female from Cross 16. Before we go, here's a quick status update on the rest of my crosses. Crosses 23 and 24. These pairs are established, and I'm patiently waiting for their first fry. Cross 25. A tragic setback here. The father passed away, but I'm hoping the female is already pregnant. If not, I have backup males ready to step in. Cross 27. This is a unique pairing between a red rose male and a snow white hybrid. We are in the waiting game for fry. Auxiliary Cross 3. I'm considering ending this line. I've noticed some deformities in the females, and I'm not confident a third cross will fix it. I may pivot these efforts towards Cross 27 instead. If you want a refresher on the parents that started this cross, check out part 1 of the Cross 18 journey right here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.